Hi there. I am Heather Z, an Azure Networking Champion here at Microsoft. In this video, I will walk you through a virtual WAN feature called BGP Endpoint. This feature is in public preview at time of this recording. BGP Endpoint offers the key benefit of allowing virtual WAN and everything connected to virtual WAN to learn prefixes from a third party MVA by using BGP. Remember, third party MVAs run their own operating system, and by default, the routes known by the third party MVA operating system are not, I repeat, not learned by Azure. With this cool new feature, you no longer need to configure custom or static routes to learn these prefixes, as is commonly done and described in other videos. Nor do you need to set up BGP over IPsec tunnels to inject these prefixes into the Azure fabric, which is also commonly done. Some of you may be wondering why would I use this feature rather than just use MVA in the vHub? The reason is flexibility. Any third party MVA that supports BGP multi hop can leverage this new BGP endpoint feature. Whereas at time of recording, the MVA supported natively in the vHub are limited to Barracuda SD WAN appliance, the Cisco SD WAN appliance, Fortinet firewall, Versa SD WAN, and finally, VMware VeloCloud appliance. With this feature, you can deploy your favorite MVA from template in a VNet and connect that VNet to a virtual hub. You establish BGP adjacency from this MVA to the BGP endpoint service exposed in the virtual hub. Once BGP is established, the routes propagated by the MVA will be learned by vHub which then propagates it to the rest of the environment, including other local VNets, remote VNets, and on-prem. You can have multiple instances of MVAs peering with BGP endpoint in your virtual WAN environment in the same region or in a remote region. So what I will demo for you is an example of a multi-region virtual WAN with virtual hubs in East and West. There is a spoke VNet connected to the West vHub and connected to the East vHub is a spoke, an on-premises environment connected by Azure VPN. And the most significant part of this demo is this DMZ VNet, which is connected to the East vHub. In this DMZ VNet is a Cisco CSR, which has established adjacency to the vHub BGP endpoint. For the purposes of this demo, you can think of this Cisco CSR as an emulated SD-WAN appliance, and it is sourcing the route 2220-24. This network is not native to Azure. Once everything is configured properly, you will have reachability from VNet to simulated virtual WAN appliance from on-prem to this 2.2.2.0/24 network, as well as from the remote spoke to this network. I have already prepared the configuration and will walk you through the steps I took in building this demo. Let's start with the topology view that virtual WAN shows, which matches my PowerPoint diagram earlier. I can find it, here we go. So we see two, um, two virtual hubs, east and west. In west, we have a spoke VNet connected. In east, we have a spoke VNet we have a site-to-site -site VPN connection representing the on-premises environment, and we have this DMZ environment. The CSR or the emulated SD-WAN appliance is 172.22.2.4. Let me just show you that real quick. At 
Excellent. Okay, 172.22, uh, 2.4. So let's go to the blade with the BGP endpoint service. This is a new blade with this BGP peer, um, peer parameter. And this is where I can see what are the BGP speaker addresses on the VHUB, 172.23.0, 132, and 133. There are two for redundancy. On the VHUB, I would need to configure the remote side or the Cisco CSR appliance. I know my ASN for Cisco is 65011, and previously I mentioned the CSR BGP speaker address is 172.22.2.4. And literally, this is all the configuration um, requires the ASN, the BGP speaker address of the remote side, as well as the peered connection across which BGP service can find this peer address. If I had redundant CSRs, I would need to add and configure another BGP endpoint. So I would need to give it a different unique name. Um, it could be the same ASN number. It would need to be a different IPv4 address, and it could be the same or a different virtual network connection pointer. Now let's move to the CSR side. Oops, here we go. Sorry. Okay. So let me show you what I configured on the S emulated SD1 CSR side. Okay. So I configured the remote neighbors of 172.23.0132 and 133, which you still see in the background of my screen. You cannot forget multi-hop, which I specified as incredibly important. And of course, we know the VHUB ASN is 65515. So with that, I have my BGP neighbor relationships defined. Now, the next important thing I need to do is define the prefix 2220 that I want to source and send to um, virtual hub, which will then redistribute and propagate across the entire environment. So that's expressed in this particular line in the case of Cisco IOS, but of course it would look different with another SD, SD WAN appliance. So with that, if I do show IP BGP summary, I will see that I have established BGP relationship with the virtual hub BGP speakers of dot 132 and dot 133. And when I do show IP BGP, um, show IP BGP actually, I will see that I am sourcing uh, the 2220 slash 24 prefix. And I am learning all of these networks from ASN 65515 across that BGP adjacency. So I've learned my local spoke VNet prefix. I've learned my remote, remote, sorry, this one, 172.24.0.0 remote spoke prefix. And I've even learned these prefixes from the on-prem environment because BGP is propagating everything. So now if I were to validate the routing in the virtual hub, I will see that
I will see that um, Virtual Hub, in fact, sees this 2220 slash 24 network being learned via the next hop CSR SD WAN, that connection. And it is being learned as a BGP endpoint. That's what that next hop means. And it's telling me that this 2220 slash 24 um, form prefix is coming from ASN 65011. So now if I go and validate the validate from a local VM. Whoops. Um, I have reachability, five milliseconds, pretty good. I can SSH into this. And this matches the effective routes. I've learned 2220 slash 24 through virtual WAN, through this um, virtual network gateway, which represents the virtual hub. Now, if I go to my on-premises environment, my on-premises environment is represented by the um, networks of 10.3 and 192.168. When I do show IP route, I see that indeed I have learned 2220 slash 24 um, network, and I have, I'm able to reach 222. 10 by ping. And I'm able to SSH into this foreign network 22210. The final test I will do is from the remote west BNET. Again, through the remote network, I'm able to reach 22210. Just to show you, I can reach 22210. And of course, since I am traversing um, east to west, you can see um, the response time um, for west to reach to reach the um, non-native prefix of 22210 um, takes longer. And with that, I have completed my validation. And let's just go back and summarize the steps that we took. So remember in virtual WAN, um, just keep everything simple in the default routing table. You want to build the peering between the virtual hub and the MVA VNet where you have your SD-WAN or third-party appliance. Um, without this peering, you're not going to be able to successfully establish BGP peering. So that's why you have to ensure that peering is built. On the VHub side, we walk through going to the new blade, go to BGP peer and configure the MVA NSA and the BGP speaker address of the MVA. And on the MVA side, you would configure the VHub ASN, which is 65515 today, and the BGP endpoint speaker addresses, which we displayed through, um, which is shown in this new blade. And finally, the whole point of this is to ensure that you are able to reach from the virtual WAN environment a prefix that is not native to Azure. And in this case, we demonstrated that by the 2220-24 um, address, and it is known locally and remotely. And just to summarize the key benefits of this scenario and BGP endpoint, basically it offers dynamic reachability from on-prem, remote and local hub to the non-native networks. You no longer need to define static routes and you no longer need to use IPsec to connect the MVA to the virtual hub. 
And of course, if your favorite NVA is already supported natively in the VHub, you will not necessarily need this feature, but it is an option. So I remember when I was in college, professors would do a problem in class and then say, you will be able to extend the concept of this problem to all the other problems in the textbook. So the inner professor in me will give you a homework to build what happens and analyze what happens when you advertise the same slash 32 host from multiple locations in NVAs. This is a more sophisticated use case. I do not have office hours, but if you're really stuck, you can reach out to me or I will point you as a hint to my esteemed colleague, Adam Stewart's GitHub. Thanks and have a great day.